those that are joining me for the third week in the CBT educational session, welcome. If this is your first time, uh, welcome as well. And let me just start off with a really brief introduction. My name is Kathy Basne. I have been working in the mental health and addictions field for about 20 years, a little over 20 years now, and currently have my own uh, practice as a registered psychotherapist, um, currently in the Waterloo region, although I do offer uh, virtual sessions as well. So really excited that I get the opportunity to kind of come here and spend a bit of time with, with folks on uh, Wednesday mornings, just to kind of talk about CBT. So understanding that what we think about absolutely impacts our moods, which is good news and bad news. The bad news is sometimes that wheel of thought kind of gets the better of us um, and leads us down a path that results in kind of heavy unwanted moods anxiety depression stress the really good news is that when we start to understand this and start to put some strategies in place we actually have the ability to start to shift the direction of our thoughts so that they become more supportive in a way that allows us to start to feel happier and at least move in the direction of more of a happier, relaxed or a calm state. So just wanna kinda of put out the disclaimer as always that these are educational sessions, they're not therapy sessions. So if at some point in the session, you notice that you're feeling really stressed or if after the session, um, your emotional uh, unsupportive levels feel just too high for you, I'm gonna encourage you to, to reach out. There's all of our communities have um, crisis lines um, and whenever possible, highly, highly recommend um, the support of a, of a trained therapist. Um, but from an educational perspective, there's a lot of strategies and things that we can do to try and move us in the direction of feeling a bit better and a bit better and a bit better until we feel a whole lot better. And for those of us who are already in a place where we feel better, it's all about how do we further enhance that state um, to, to continue to enjoy life to the fullest. And really these strategies are about bringing the mind, body, and soul together. But what we often don't hear about is mind, body, soul, and emotions. And that our emotions really are um, a different entity from the other three, but an important part in terms of that overall emotional resiliency and happiness in life. So just a really quick review of the previous uh, two weeks. Um, the first week we explored the idea of wise mind, so looking at the importance of bringing together that cognitive side of our brains, the side that thinks through things with that emotional side of us. Typically, we tend to be one or the other in terms of dominant. The goal is whenever possible to move us forward so that both are acting from a place of um, consistency and support so that we have all the information we need to make good decisions. So an example of that would be any decision I'm making, whether it's small or big, I'm checking in, what are the logical thoughts, what's the thought-based process, but I'm also checking in on what does, what's the emotional state that comes up with each thought that I have related to those decisions. And that informs me, that gives me a fuller picture because sometimes on paper, something sounds perfect, but emotionally, it just is not a fit. No matter how much rationally we think it's going to work, it's not. If emotionally, there's no connection to it or there's huge resistance to it. Um, the last week, what we looked at was three strategies, as I hold up four fingers, three strategies. We looked at emotional identification, and we're going to spend a little bit of time on a strategy today that includes that, but emotional identification is where we stop, we take a deep breath, and we just ask ourselves, what is it that I feel right now? And just notice what we feel. Then we do a body scan from the toes all the way to the top. How do I know I feel that? Where in my body am I experiencing that emotion? And then we scale it, zero to 10, 10 being the most intense that emotion can be. These emotions can be supportive or unsupportive, positive or negative. We just wanna feel them. And then we ask ourselves the three questions all over again until there's no new emotional states. 
The second strategy that we learned last week was the one around noticing hot thoughts. So hot thoughts are what are those thoughts that aren't very supportive to us? Those thoughts that bring up kind of an anxiousness or a stress or a demotivator, but those thoughts that kind of sometimes run around in our mind in a way that actually derails the direction we want to go in. So a hot thought might be, um, I mentioned this example last week, for some reason, every time I go to log into Zoom, I have the hot thought of what if I can't figure it out this week? What if I can't get logged on and something goes wrong? And what if I mess up? So because I know that that's a hot thought that plays every single time I'm going to log into Zoom to run a session, I know in advance to actually um, do something that grounds me so that emotionally I am in a place where I have the capacity to deal with that hot thought. And we're going to play today with a strategy that directly helps gently challenge that hot thought. And then the third strategy we looked at last week was creating a list for ourselves of all the different things that fill us up. What are the things that nurture us in life? And to actually have it somewhere written down or on our phone in notes or something that allows that when we feel stressed or we're having a hard time, we don't have to think through what could I do to feel better. We can actually refer straight to the list and then do something that helps us. So that might be something like a meditation, going for a walk, attending a fitness class. It might be any of the different strategies that we're learning um, in these sessions. But it, what is the thing that's going to help me feel just a little bit better? And when we look at CBD in particular, the goal really is how can I feel just a little bit better and then a little bit better and a little bit better because those little bit betters have compounding interest. And in time, we can look back and go, wow, I feel a lot better. Um, so that's, that's kind of the summary of the previous weeks. Um, so today, I want to pull some of those pieces together into a bit of a, a, bit of a longer strategy um, in terms of many steps within this strategy. So if you have pen and paper and or can, can refer back to this video on the, uh, the Parlor Project website, I'm going to suggest you do that because what I'm going to do is walk you through the steps, um, but it's important to know each of the steps. So I'm going to give examples as we go along, um, but breaking down the steps. So just before I touch on that, what I want to talk a little bit about is why this strategy is, um, is, can be very impactful for many of us. And a big part of that is, is that what we know from kind of the research around human behavior and the neuroscience in terms of what's going on in our brain in terms of how we navigate our world is that as human beings, we tend to pretty much across the board, navigate our lives based on the stories of our experiences. So we have an experience and that gets logged in our brain as a story. And some of those stories are really positive and some of those stories are not so good and there's a whole bunch in between. But each of our experiences get logged in the brain as stories. It gets stored there so that we can make sense of the upcoming experiences that we have. So even on an unconscious level, each of our experiences, our brain is looking back, scanning back to say, what other experiences did I have that can inform me on how to navigate this situation? Our perception of our experiences in life, typically and almost always, are navigated through what we call polarities. So understanding life through, um, we understand good through understanding bad. We understand light through understanding darkness. We understand happiness by understanding sadness. We understand anxiety by understanding relaxation or calmness. So there's all these polarities. This particular exercise is meant to give us a strategy to just kind of slow things down 
down and to explore the story around the thought that's causing some distress or um, anxiety or whatever it is that's causing from an unsupported perspective. We don't typically use the strategy around something that feels good um, or thoughts that are supportive to us. The strategy is thoughts that are unsupportive that we want to look at and change. What it helps us do is put us in the center of the polarity where we can see both both sides. We can see the evidence that supports the unsupportive thought, like why we have those thoughts, but we can also look in the direction of feeling better. So we're in that neutral place where we can see both sides and we want to start to explore more and more evidence that helps us look in the direction of feeling better. The goal is to feel better. So essentially what we do is we take a piece of paper and we create columns and I'm going to go over each of the column strategies as as we discuss this in this session but in the very first column we essentially write what is the situation so let's use me logging into zoom as the situation um, because I've used that example a couple times on here now so I write down on the chart the situation is every time I go to log in to run a zoom class the then the next column is what's the unsupportive thought so what is that thought that you hear in your head that tells you something that's causing anxiousness or stress or unpleasant feelings so the unsupportive thought for me in this situation is what if for some reason i can't log on right or what if zoom just won't let me in or what if i forget the code and don't put it in right so the main thought is what if i mess up that's the main thought and that's a hot thought because it causes the next section on the chart is that emotional identification exercise that we talked about last week so the next one is, what are the feelings that come up related to this thought? So for me, it would be anxiousness, um, stress, fear, fear that I'm going to mess up and let people down. Um, so in the exercise, what you want to do is just continue to allow yourself to pull up what those different emotions are. And then I want you to scale them. So how high can the anxiety hit? So let's just say many, many weeks ago when I first started spending time with the Parlor Project or first started running uh, my counseling sessions online, what would that level of stress be? That level of stress for me in terms of anxiety was probably a good eight and a half, maybe a nine. Um, the stress itself probably was about the same. The fear of messing up, that one was even higher. That for sure was a solid nine. So if I'm looking at it today, it's not as stressful, but that's, I've been cheating. I've been using this exercise already um, because I naturally use this exercise pretty often. So let's just say for today, as I was logging on, I noticed that the anxious levels were already say at a seven. So still pretty high. So I have all those emotions written down now in that section. The next section I'm going to go to is what's the evidence that supports the unsupportive thought? And why do we do that? We do that because we really want to validate why we feel what we feel. We want to validate why that story, why that unsupportive thought exists. And this is really important when we look at kind of the self-help movement that has a little bit more of the affirmations around, if you just think positively, you'll feel positive. And there's so many of us that are like, but I keep telling myself life is great and yet it doesn't feel better. Why? And it's often that the strategy around validating why we feel what we feel gets missed. And it's this thought if we think about the reasons why we feel this way, then aren't we just strengthening why we feel this way? Well, to some degree it's true, but what's most important and what we know around the neuroscience in terms of the release of some of those emotional stresses, those emotions are intended to serve us well. From a survival perspective, we need to hear those unsupportive emotions. We need to hear when we have fear, when we're scared, and there is a difference between those two. We need to understand anxiety, stress, all of those pieces because they're really important messages that give us information as to where we are at in life. Are we in danger 
are we just we've got too much on the go whatever those pieces are yes a lot of times those go too far and those very important um, tools for us in terms of helping us navigate life actually become detrimental to us so our anxiety gets turned on and doesn't turn off or a sense of depression gets turned off turned on and doesn't get turned off so yes they can go too far in ways that are no longer supportive to us but what we understand from the neuroscience is that when we actually tap into and acknowledge those states and acknowledge why we have them, it actually helps start to release them. So this is a really important step. Write down any and all thoughts you have around what's the evidence that supports the unsupportive thought. So the evidence around my unsupportive thought, the unsupportive thought of what if I mess up when I log on to Zoom, the evidence would be because it doesn't matter how many months I've been doing this, I still tend to mess up at times. Um, another evidence would be even when I do everything that I need to do, there's external circumstances and sometimes the internet fails or sometimes there's a glitch in Zoom or one of the other apps I'm using. So the reality is sometimes things still go wrong regardless of how well I have tried to put things in place to, for them to go right. So it's really important that I understand and validate that the reason that thought exists was for good reasons. But I'm also recognizing it exists in a way that causes me unnecessary anxiousness. So now I also want to move to the next section. And the next section is, what is the evidence that does not support the unsupportive thought? So what, what is going on that I know that tells me that maybe that unsupportive thought is not true or that I don't need to have that unsupportive thought, or at the very least, how can I damper it? So the evidence that does not support that unsupportive thought for me in this example would be that the vast majority of time, everything goes smoothly. The other evidence would be that I know from a neuroscience perspective that the more stressed out I am, the more my body is being flooded with cortisol and other unsupportive, um, in this situation, unsupportive hormones that basically cloud my frontal cortex. That's the front part of the brain that helps me think through things. So if I log on already in a really heightened stress, state of stress, I am much more likely to make mistakes that otherwise I would not have made, which means I'm much more likely to self-prophesize that unsupportive thought. So the evidence that says maybe I don't need that um, unsupportive thought or I can dampen it a bit, take it down a notch, is really that the clear, more relaxed state in which I enter and begin a Zoom session, the much more likely it is that I will be able to think through any glitches that may come up. The other really big piece is that I know that even when mistakes have happened, I can fix them. There hasn't been a Zoom session that I haven't been able to get onto or fix the problem in order to run the session in a way that I hope is supportive to folks. So having all that unnecessary stress in the beginning is not serving me well. So now what I want to do is move to the next category. And the next category is what alternative thought can I create that actually tries to counterbalance, tries to ease off that original unsupportive thought. So now I'm gonna really look at that evidence that does not support the unsupportive thought. So the evidence that says, maybe I don't need that unsupportive thought, or maybe that unsupportive thought isn't true. I'm gonna use that information to help create an alternative statement. And my alternative statement for me in this situation is, it is what it is, and I will be able to handle whichever way it goes. So for me, it's a very neutralized statement. It's a statement that says, I got this, I'm okay. And in some cases, I really just genuinely move to, I got this, to keep it clean and short and sweet. When we first create alternative statements, we want to have, we want to notice how we feel around it. So what we're now going to do is check back in to the emotions that was that third 
category. So now I'm going to say, well, I noticed that originally when I thought of the unsupportive thought, I felt anxiousness and I scaled it pretty high up around, I forgot what I said. I think it was an eight, 8.5 or a nine. So now I check in with the alternative thought. So I hear the thought of what if I mess up? I now have the alternative thought in my mind. I got this. And I've worked through the process. My brain knows that I have worked through this. This is processing the mindset in order to start to release emotions. So now I check back in and I check with myself and where is that emotional state now? The goal of this tool is that emotion now has dropped down. So where it becomes important in terms of when we play with our numbering system is we want to notice even if it went from an 8.5 down to an 8.2, because we want to acknowledge that even just saying that statement in the beginning helped it drop by 0.3. Sometimes we have nice, beautiful, big drops. It was an 8.5. I work through this process. I check in with myself around the anxiousness and wow, it went from an 8.5 down to a five. Fantastic. Every once in a while, it bumps up. If it bumps up, it's likely telling you that information that came up under that column around evidence that supports the unsupportive thoughts, so that validating evidence, there's likely something in that that we want to pull out and use in a brand new thought record. So we start the thought record over again using that thought. What we want to do at the end of having processed this is two things. One, we wanna take the alternative thought that we've created, and if we can, we wanna write it on sticky notes and paste it everywhere that we can think, on the mirror in my room, on the back of the door of my bedroom, on the back of the door of the house, on the mirror in the bathroom, on any of the doors I have to go through, um, throughout the house, on the kitchen table, anywhere that we feel safe to be able to put it. The reason why is because that unsupportive thought is already well grained in our mind. So now we want to slowly counteract it with the new, more supportive thought, that alternative statement. So for me, because mine tends to be related to signing on for Zoom, I have a sticky note that I put on the edge of my computer so that I can look at it. And it literally says, what is, will be, I've got this. And so for me, that's enough in this particular example. And then the last thing we wanna do is go refer to the list that we started creating last week, which is what are the things that we can do that nurture us and help us feel a little more emotionally filled up, where we just feel like we have more emotional capacity to handle the bumps in the road in life. And the reason we wanna do that is because we recognize that using this strategy is emotional work and a lot of emotional work can feel tiring or exhausting um, and it can be hard sometimes to process through and face and look at and hear and really kind of put on paper some of those unsupportive thoughts so we really want to make sure we take some time at the end to do something that helps nurture us and helps feel Full, emotionally increasing and strengthening that emotional capacity. So that's the thought record tool. So essentially, if you Google thought record tools, it's actually fairly easy to find online the chart for this. Um, but essentially, again, you're going to start off just in a quick review, you're going to start off with writing down what's the situation. Then you're gonna look at what is the unsupportive thought? What's the thought that's causing some unpleasant feelings or some stressful or de-stressing feelings? Then we wanna do that emotional identification exercise. We wanna check in. What is it that I'm feeling in relation to this thought? Write it down, scale it. Ask again, what other emotion am I feeling? Write it down, scale it. Continue on. Sometimes you're gonna have one or two emotions come up. Sometimes you might have like a whole flood of them. Every once in a while you have some, some, some supportive emotions that pop up in this column and that's perfectly fine too. Then you wanna to go to the next column, which is what's the evidence that supports the unsupportive thought? So that evidence is validating why we have that initial thought and that emotional reaction to that thought. And you write down anything that you can think of that's kind of supporting that unsupportive thought. Then the next one is, 
what's the evidence that does not support that unsupportive thought? So what's the evidence that maybe says to you that maybe this isn't true, or maybe I don't need this thought anymore, or maybe this thought is no longer helpful for me. And you're going to write all the evidence that supports that. Then you're going to create from that column, what's your alternative thought? I got this. That's, that would be mine. And then the next one is rechecking in with those emotions. Where we're looking is to see a decrease in those emotional states that were riding a bit high in the beginning. If there's no decrease, we're gonna go back to the evidence that supported the unsupportive thought and pull some of those out and do this exercise again. Okay, and then we always end with what is something I can do to support myself in order to feel a little fuller in terms of my emotional capacity, just recognizing that I just did some great, important emotional work. So that's the strategy for today. One of the things that's beautiful about the thought record as a strategy is its intention is to help de-stress in the moment. But from a longer term perspective, um, it's actually helping us change unsupportive thought patterns to more supportive thought patterns and also helps us notice themes. So as we use this tool, we start to go, wow, I noticed that there's a lot of thoughts that are similar in this regard. And what that means is we can create one or two or three alternative statements that we use for many of the different unsupportive thoughts. My experience with this tool is in the beginning, highly going to recommend that you handwrite. The neuroscience shows us that the handwriting process helps shift some of the neuro paths in the brain much more uh, quicker and more effectively than typing. Um, so I'm going to suggest that you grab sheets of paper, you write out the columns, and you just use the process in a handwritten form and I would suggest using this tool maybe three times a week. In the beginning, I don't suggest using it more than that. But the goal is as you get used to the tool and familiar with the tool, eventually, I don't even, I don't even write it down anymore. New situations pop up and I notice mostly in hindsight now when I think back to, well, I'm kind of happy with or okay with how I handled that situation. What I recognize is I have trained my brain that I use this tool pretty regularly in a very meaningful way, but without having to write it down and most of the time not even noticing I've used it. So I've actually trained my brain to go through these steps fairly quickly in my unconscious thought processing around what I'm doing and how I'm acting and what decisions I'm making. Um, so, so that's the thought record. I hope you find that useful. My intention is to do a review on this again next week um, so that we can keep moving along. So I'm actually going to suggest if you have questions, feel free to pop them up now. If not, um, please, as you're, if you are able to play with the tool over the next week, please bring your questions. And what we'll do is actually open up at the very beginning of the session if there's any questions that came up or any times that you got stuck um, with using the tool. And I'll try and answer the questions as best I can before I then go into introducing um, another strategy um, that I hope you will find helpful when it comes to really looking at how, what are our thoughts and in what ways can we change them in order to continue to move in the direction of feeling better, feeling good, and moving through some of those stressors in our lives in very positive ways. So thank you so much.